Hello and welcome to One on One. My guest today on One on One is Andrew Bourne. He's a regional manager for Zoho Corporation Africa. He heads the marketing and sales for Zoho Corporation in Africa, helping businesses grow with the use of technology. Now, Zoho offers about 45 plus application and products to help businesses. It's affordable and trusted with more than 50 million business users worldwide. Now, it recently did a, um, a survey with worldwide works recently on a new study that looks at the pri um, privacy and awareness among companies in Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa. Now, the survey takes a look at business benefits associated with adhering to privacy laws and how organizations can accrue even greater benefits with an increased focus on privacy. Good afternoon, Mr. Bourne. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So let's get straight to it. Um, I want to find out from you, why is the privacy law important to the success of an organization? Well, any organization needs to obviously take its customers' privacy very seriously and the protection of their data. Um, and so that's why you'll see a lot of the, the, a lot of the companies that were surveyed said, you know, 70% of them said that they weren't aware of privacy laws, but 73% of them have already applied data privacy policies mm. in their companies that aren't necessarily um, required by law. So we've seen that you know companies, they want to protect their customer, that's first and foremost. And then when the law does get put in place, um, they then start only looking at it you know, once um, judgments are being passed or, or people are getting into trouble. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's just very important that they secure their 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 data of their of their um, of their customers because it's the loyalty and the trust that you want to build with your customers. You don't want to jeopardize that. Mm. So why are businesses having low awareness of government data regulation, but understand commitments to customers and their data? Well, I think it, it, it could be a case of maybe the the advertising of the regulations. It could be the the fact that the regulations aren't strictly enforced in certain um, sections of the um, the business sector, um, but you'll see more and more as people read and as as there's more awareness, people will start complying more and more and more. And I think it's also important that the the regulator that the that the government does put in place needs to make sure that they take, you know, every person that has um, sent them a potential uh, privacy law breach, that they do investigate it and that there are penalties um, so that they can properly police the law. Okay. Um, so what about um, employees? How aware are employees of the data laws of the organization that you, that you work in? So for example, you know, I don't think I know like the data law for, you know, my, for my organization. So how aware are employees? So it's important. Some of them aren't aware, as you said, like it's, it's, it's tricky. Um, but I think companies are going to have to look at um, making more easily digestible um, data policies so they can have their long paper that the attorneys draw up with the legal jargon, but also to have a more simpler version like notes to the data privacy <clears throat> policy. And then also to do um, some sort of training with your staff to make sure that they understand what the, the privacy laws are so they can also explain it to customers as well as, um, you know, implement it in their day-to-day -day workings within the organization. Okay, so when you talk about training, for example, is it something as basic as, you know, you go on a website and then they ask you, click on this, do you accept or, um, you know, ignore? So maybe, maybe you should start with explaining something as basic as that. for them. So what does that mean? I go to a website and you say, they, you know, this pop-up comes up and says, oh, the cookies are monitoring. Um, does that affect my privacy in any way? Yeah, so I think it's, it's important. And we've had an example already where we've actually consulted with a company where one of the IT um, department members decided that they would use a free application or a free technology provider to manage the support queries from all their customers. Uh, and so when they came to us and we spoke to them about our support desk, which is Zoho Desk, we had to explain to them that the free version that they were using of this other technology, in the small print, it said that it's allowed to share and oh. use the data that are put into each ticket. Now, this company was putting in customer information and customer email addresses oh, into wow. each ticket, but they weren't aware that that data was allowed to be used by that other technology brand. Oh, wow. 
you know. And so it was a bit of a big shock to, to him um, being in the department, but it's also the company didn't really educate him about the fact that he needs to make sure that he looks at the finer print of the technology that he puts in for the business. So it's things like that, that, you know, companies need to be aware of, they need to make staff aware of. Um, it's like for us, we know that we don't have, you know, for Zoho, we don't have third party trackers on any of our websites and all of our staff know that, you know, so it's, um, it's just, it's important that your staff know what you're doing around data privacy. All right. Um, so what's the cost of keeping a third party tracker for your business? Well, I mean, we saw in the um, in the survey that there are about, I think it's 18% of businesses are uncomfortable with having these third party trackers. Yeah. But of those 18% that are uncomfortable, they said that um, they actually can't do without it because the third party trackers add so much value to their lead generation. Yeah. But as, as you asked, the cost, the cost could be that if there is a data breach by one of these third party um, providers and it, it goes back to your company and your company is then, you know, um, let's say the regulator finds your company to be negligent by using the third party tracker, you can be in a lot of trouble. Mm. So a lot of the laws say that you need to make your best effort to protect your customers data and if you're using third party trackers then you are well aware that 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 data is being shared so it's it's going to be interesting but if we see what apple did with the release of ios 14.5 they allowed users to opt in to be tracked or to decide not to be tracked and it was 87 percent decided that they don't want to be tracked so you can see the trend is people don't want to be tracked they, they want their privacy as they're surfing the internet. And I think you'll see more and more data privacy laws become more and more strict and the regulators will enforce them in, in a more strict manner going forward. Okay. Okay, um, Andrew, we have to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. I still have Andrew Bourne with me and he's breaking down the privacy laws and why it's very important as an internet user, as a software user, as a phone user, as an everyday user of the internet on understanding um, privacy law. So Andrew, um, my next question to you is why should businesses be aware of the privacy policies of the AI tools that they use? Well, it's, it's important because these AI tools that they're using will be handling their customer data. So it's important to know what the AI tool is going to do with it. And as we know, machine learning, um, these AI tools need to be fed you know, information and they get taught. So it's important to know what that AI tool is doing with your, your customer's information. What about um, you know, everyday use? So I like the example you had given about um, Apple earlier on. So now I'm not even working for an organization. It's just like with my phone, what are the things that everyday phone users need to know? What are the things that I need to know, um, in, you know, using my phone? What are the things I need to agree to or not? I don't know if you can help us with that. Yeah, well, I think they just need to be aware that when you're using free technology, it does help because yes, it's free and you don't have to pay for it. But what you're actually doing is you're paying with your data. Mm. So you just need to be mindful of what that application or technology is doing. Okay. There are some stories that you can find on the internet, well-documented stories where people have used an application, it's free, but it's been releasing a lot of very private information about people. Uh, and when that was found out, you know, a few months down the line, people were so shocked and they all deleted the app and they didn't want to use it. But you've got to be mindful that when you start using a technology or if you're using a technology, just to be mindful of, you know, where are they going to store the data? Is it going to be safe? Um, if you're going to be putting in your residential address or your phone number or things like that, you just need to make sure that it's going to be protected. So are you saying that paid apps are safer? Is it safer yeah. to use paid for apps? Well, definitely paid apps are safer, but you still have to look. I mean, there are still some paid app, uh, apps that have trackers uh, in their technology. So you have to be very careful. We've, we've seen places where companies will double dip you know, they'll get revenue from a paying customer, but they'll also then sell or share 
the, the user data to a third party. So it's just very important to just read the, the privacy policies, the security policies, um, and uh, you'll probably be able to also then Google it and, and Google to find out if there's any issues related to privacy and using a specific technology. Okay. So recently, um, Zoho Corporation, your company, and Worldwide Works recently worked on a new study that looks at privacy awareness among companies in Nigeria, in Kenya, and South Africa. So can you tell us more about the key findings of that survey? Yes, well, the main key finding we spoke about earlier is that 70% of Nigerians that were in the study, they weren't aware of the, the government laws related to privacy. Um, but 73% of them have already put in place privacy policies to make sure that they protect their customers. Um, the one key finding that differentiated kind of Nigeria was that 7% more of Nigerian businesses compared to the, the rest of the sample, um, they share transactional data with strategic partners. Um, and uh, the research company seemed to believe that that was because um, the transactional data sharing is not explicitly forbidden by the NDPR which is the Nigerian data um, privacy or protection regulation. Um, so that was one kind of slight differentiating kind of factor. And, um, but it was interesting to find that 3% um, that fewer of Nigerian businesses are sharing data and feedback to strategic partnerships overall. So it actually looks like uh, you know, Nigerian businesses aren't relying too heavily on third party um, tracking um, technologies, um, but they they are definitely also sharing a bit more transactional data with their strategic partners. Okay, thank you. So just before I let you go, I want you to share a few tips for Plus TV Africa. So what do we need to do to you know protect ourselves better from um, hackers and ensure that every um, you know staff content and the content that we create on the channel is well protected. So first of all, use technology that has the ability to be GDPR enabled, you know, that's the, that's the European standard. A lot of other African laws are based on GDPR. Um, like Zoho, for instance, you can literally click a button and you can switch on the different features that are GDPR, that make what's you GDPR What's compliant. GDPR? I have to interrupt you. What's GDPR? Can you break it down for layman like What does GDPR mean? It's the European data privacy law. Okay, um, okay. It protects the European citizens okay. and it's, it's not governed specifically to Europe. It's not within Europe's borders. It's actually borderless. So GDPR regulators can prosecute a company that's in another region as long as oh. that company is, is offering products and services to a European citizen. Oh, okay. So that's important for companies to know. So even if you are in Nigeria and you, your business is offering products and services to European citizens, you have to comply with GDPR. Oh, okay. What else do we need to know? The other thing is that use technology that allows you to put in security policies. So have two-factor authentication when your staff log in. You know, don't just allow them to log in with a simple password. Allow there to be either SMS or to use a authenticator application to make sure it is your staff member that's logging in. And that just allows you to have one more level of security in case of any hacking attacks mm -hmm. and things like that. And then use technology that has very clear security policies and data privacy policies. Mm -hmm. um, for Zoho, we own all layers of the stack. So from our technology code all the way down to our data centers, we own everything. So we don't use a third party to be able to offer our service. And that's why we can be highly secure as far as data protection and security. So it's important just to look at the technologies you're using, make sure that they've got security features in place and that they do comply with the um, GDPR or the local data privacy laws. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Andrew Bourne. We hope to have you again sometime soon. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's all we can take on 101 today. I hope you were um, enlightened just like I was um, about privacy laws in Nigeria. See you sometime soon. Thank you.